Welcome to Believe in 76ers with your hosts, former 76ers point guard Eric Snow and two Sixers fanatics in Marcus and Tasia Dash. Believe in 76ers is presented by BetOnline.ag. BetOnline.ag is your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. BetOnline is always your sports information headquarters this season as we have you covered for all your sports wagering needs. Basketball, MLB, NHL, right to UFC, and boxing. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games you can play right from your home. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use our promo code, that's BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Believe in 76ers Podcast. I'm Marcus Dash, here with our host, former legendary 76ers point guard, Eric Snow, and my brother, Tasia Dash. So two things, we got NBA Draft Week, and we got Tasia's Wedding Week. It's a big, big week on the show. <laughs> yeah, big week. Huge. Congratulations. Thanks, buddy. It's going to be a hard um, – that's a hard match because where I am, where Marcus is going to be, is going to be like in the middle of the night uh, when the draft's happening, like 4, 4 a.m., 3 a.m., what is that, something like that, right? Yeah. So yeah. it'll be uh, it'll be tough, but we're going to try <laughs> We're going to try to keep up with what's going on. At least we're not waiting for our pick in the first round. That's true. Unless something happens where we trade into the first round, but I doubt I mean, it's, that's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, second. Second. Yeah. We'll, we'll get into the, uh, the potential because there's rumblings and obviously there's a lot of rumblings this week and it's off season. So there's always going to be rumblings we're going to talk about, but um, rumblings that we may be trading in uh, to the second round as, uh, as we kind of hinted at before reports have been hinting at that all off season about us looking mm-hmm. at certain second round guys. Uh, but before we get into the show, um, I did want to, we touched on it a little bit last week uh, about that Rico Hines was potentially going to come over to Philadelphia. It was a potential thing. Now mm-hmm. that he's officially an assistant coach, Eric, um, you know, Rico Hines um, talk about what you're seeing from the kind of coaching staff that we have now with Bobby Jackson and now Rico Hines. What do you make of the kind of coaching staff uh, that Nick Nurse is kind of surrounding? I mean, I know with? Rico. Rico knows the game. And Rico's he, like obviously huge in player development. Um, and I think it's not just development during the season. I think it'll be a carryover for the offseason. Um, it, it tells me that they're going to invest in younger players um, and develop them. Um, that that's how I kind of view Rico, the development of the current players, but also the development of younger players and carry that not only in the season, but during the off season. Uh, that's where a lot of those, you know, everybody talking about the LA runs, but it's not necessarily about just the playing. It's about the player development mm-hmm. that Rico can do out there. Um, as far as Bobby, I just, you know, I think Bobby's worked his way up. I mean, I think he gets a, a guy that has um, played in the league, um, he knows the league, um, but I think probably the biggest aspect Bobby could bring to the team is a guy that has succeeded in his league at a role and, and being able to articulate that to players of how important your role can be, even if you aren't a starter in this league. So that's one thing I know that he can bring to yeah. the table. That's great. Especially with a very expensive three or four guys. You know, oh, you, you know, we always going to have those. You, you always have those guys. Yeah, you need the role players to step up big time. Um, and Rico Hines, I, I believe that was the run from last year where uh, the one with Scotty Barnes was guarding like Harden all the way up the core and Harden yeah, gave us an inspirational speech about like, you know, it's good that you guys are out here playing hard. So it's cool that, you know, Harden and him are tight. And I know a lot of superstars are, are, are cool with uh, Rico. Yeah, he works out with James um, primarily a lot. So, so yeah. Might be hitting at something. He leaves. <laughs> do, do you yeah, think I'm not, I'm not putting anything to that into that? I'm just saying that I know uh, I, because yeah. I had a conversation with Rico and he's brought up James Hart. Now it was a long okay. time ago, um, but he he mentioned James' name as one of the guys that were there. And, you yeah, know, and he was there last year, so obviously yeah, it was so. kind of no surprise to me because James is from that area, so it, 
you know, there was some familiarity there, you know, some common ground. So it was nothing for me to kind of dig into, per se. Yeah. Yep. How much does a guy like that, like Rico Hines, like, um, you know, cause he, you know, holds these uh, runs in California, but, you know, has a lot of face time with these players. How much does that kind of help, I guess, in the, in the recruitment of getting guys to come to Philadelphia? How, like, the, does that, does that, does that help obviously having a personal relationship? No, I, with you guys? I, I think that it may give guys more comfort um, to come, but I think the biggest recruitment in free agency is money. Like, yeah. like let's not joke around. Like that is, yeah. You know, the situation is going to get guys to change teams or go to teams. Um, yeah. But I think having a guy there that you're comfortable with and you know that can help you because that's maybe that's someone you deal with or someone you know um, during the offseason, it helps. It definitely helps. Um, but I wouldn't think it would be um, the main reason why guys would come because we, we know yeah. what that is. Yeah. It's nice to have once you're with that team, but I don't think it's drawing you to that team, if that makes sense. It's a plus. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely a plus. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, um, uh, certain little perks of like business class flying. I've been flying a lot, so I've been thinking that, you know, you don't, you don't do it for some of those small perks, but once you're there, you're like, hey, they also give you this? That's great. Yeah. Real yeah. silverware? Amazing. Yeah. A little more leg room. A little more like a half an inch, even. You're like, hey, I know it's a little difference here. This is great. Hey, that's that's important, dude. I was I, I was Goes dying. A long way. I I've been dying for the last like week. My, my legs are so sore. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So we kind of hit that James Harden. So we're gonna get into James Harden. Um. Uh, so there's there's a lot here. So I'm gonna kind of catch everybody up on the last uh, few reports on James Harden. So Matt Moore of Action Network reported that Harden to Houston has cooled down and there's concern out of Houston that the Rockets have been used as leverage um, as, as leverage the Sixers uh, into offering something closer to a max deal in terms of years or money. Our guy Eric said this last, like when the, when the reports first came out, this is what Eric said was was happening. Um, Bill Simmons said a little birdie told him that Harden back to the Sixers is a lot more realistic and probable than people think it is. And Mark Stein reported, quote, there have been some rumbles this week that despite – that undeniably strong lure that a return to Houston holds for Harden. He is said to be giving renewed consideration to returning to Philadelphia. So obviously a lot to unwrap here, but what do we think of all this? And what is your final James Harden prediction on where he signs and for how much and how many years? Well, I mean, all that, how much in years, I'll let Tasia handle all that. That's what he do. <laughs> um, my thing is, I, like I've always said, I didn't think this would be a situation of where, whether James will come back. I think the disagreement, I don't want to say dispute, the disagreements on the deal will come down to years. I firmly mm -hmm. believe that. Years, salary behind that, closely behind. Um, and I thought the Houston thing was a play. I think he would go to Houston, but I didn't think that was something he wanted to do. But if you're not going to give me this, then I have a backup plan. I have leverage. Um, if that never came in play, then you'd be like, well, where's James leverage? You, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, I think, you know, that leverage play is there. I think he, I think he will return. I, I think I'm just, I'm just not certain how the contract is going to look. I'm, I'm still not certain to this day. Like I really don't know. I'm, I'm, I think it's going to come down to figuring that out. And I think if some way they can't figure that out, then you may see all of a sudden talk of him being traded, a sign and trade. Like I said, I thought if he left, it would be a sign and trade where both teams kind of agree this isn't working. Let's get you a place and let's get us something back. Yep. Um, so I firmly believe that one, he would be, he will return on whatever deal he gets. If not, then there will be some form of a sign and trade. Which the sign and trade would be like the, best alternate option to not signing him, right? I mean, yes. he's won't leave for nothing. Um, there's also another Pompeii report that came out that pretty much echoing what Stein said, um, becoming more likely that he stays. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, it, it's it's a business. Um, Harden's just trying to yeah, make but, the but it's getting close to free agency, so it's getting close. So now, like, yes. the draft is here, free agency is a week after. So the time is here. So now people are like, well, you know, 
decisions going to be made. So, you know, you know, we're in the world now where people can't wait and see, like they got to announce before. So the word is starting to leak out. And he hasn't opted out yet. Interesting enough. Yeah. I mean, I think he's going to. Everyone thinks he's yeah, going to, but he hasn't there's, yet. There's no re- really no re- reason to do it early unless you want yeah. to. Um, but I think he's just trying to make the most he can with the most years he can. Uh, I will say this. We hear we hear guys using teams for leverage um, when they visit teams for free agency. Like, so two new teams. You're going to leverage one against the other, right? Uh, you merely just visit a team to lure the more attractive team to spend more money. Um, it's a little different, though, Greg, because we've heard since December how much James loves Houston. Houston's his home. He always wanted to go back. It's where his heart is. His favorite strip clubs are there. He's got three days off in a row. He flies right to Houston immediately, and he can't wait to get back there any chance he gets. All this different stuff, right? Now, like as the dust is settling, like you said, and we're getting closer to the actual real date, you're starting to see like the reality and the truth behind some of this. And it's that, Oh, some of that Houston stuff, it's not strong enough just to make him go there automatically. Right. And we're hearing may the bond with him and more years, a lot stronger than people maybe give it credit for, you know, he he got him out of Brooklyn. It's where he wanted to go all along. Um, You know, it sounded weird to me that after clawing to rejoin Maury and Philly, uh, he would just leave after one full year together. It just seems like unfinished business. And he actually kind of said that after the um, after the loss in Boston, like it's only one year. Like we've only done this work one time, so it's not like we've tried it all already. I think it's unfinished. Um, I think he stays. Um, I will guess the years and money. I'm gonna guess. Uh, I'm gonna guess three for one fourteen. I think his first year is thirty six. It's a little over what his opt in number would be. Uh, second year thirty eight and third year around forty. Um, that's just my, that's my on the, on the nose guess. Um, yep. So what's the most he can make this year? If they did like total, like most years, it'd be four for no, the two. Most, how much, four how much for two, 12 can be his max. No, max the highest max. for the highest amount he can make this season. This season? Yeah. Um, I'll do quick math. Two, 12 divided by four. So 53 would be the average. So it'd be around like 49, I'd say. Okay. Because it, uh, it would go up like 49, like 51 and a half, like 53 and a half, 54, and like 57 would be the last, 58 would be that last year. That would be like max, it's, it's, max, It's max. always interesting to me be with um, older players um, and why teams never really get to uh, – De-escalating contract. We're contracting yeah. down. Yeah, especially with all the CBA stuff going on. Um, so, and that's what that's where I'm getting at. Like, what what is going to be threshold for the Sixers? Like Phoenix. Like now they're in a situation where they don't have to figure some things out, or they're going to be in that danger zone. Oh, they're they're in it. No, I'm just saying. Like, you know, they could move eight and not be in it. I'm just saying. Like, yeah, not yeah. Really in it. Um. But I'm saying with the Sixers, and that's why sometimes it comes down to how they're going to address the Tobias upcoming one-year situation. Yeah. And yeah. if you re-sign James, then, you know, how's that going to look? Um, and maybe they choose to – In three years, I mean, like I said, James year. earned it, but three years is – I don't know. As I said, I see three years, but I think a month will matter. Yeah. Know, it's good because you're, I, I think you're, I think last week, the week before, you said, I mean, we obviously want to give him, I think, two. Well, I want James to get the most he can get. That's on him. Like, I'm, I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying, from a team perspective, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a tough decision. Yeah. It's a tough decision to go to him and his agent and, and, that initial offer, so James is gonna come in here with this agent and expect the max. Now, what is gonna be the first counter? The first counter the Sixers give him. That's gonna tell you how far that that's gonna tell James and his agent how far that gap is. Yeah. I well, would I think love they, to be a fly on the wall. I know, man. So would I. 
Uh, so would I. <laughs> I'd love the for first like, offer would tell me everything I need to know. I'd love if Tobias Dad was James Harden's agent, so I could oh, be at a restaurant while he talks about it on speakerphone. Oh, I just I would love that so much. There you go. <laughs> no, no, but I, I think I read the um, Sixers are trying to balance a fair offer for him and also maintain short term and long term flexibility. Yada yada yada. So, so he can't. It's not going to be longer than Joel. We know. And that. James wants as close to the max as he can get. If yeah, I mean, the, 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 the more years you cut off, the more he's going to expect on a yearly basis. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you've been involved so in this kind of stuff. I, I can time. tell you like this. If you start hearing rumbling, rumblings about it may he may not stay with Philly, then you know it's – Two years offer? Know, we know what it's talking about. Yeah. It's years, of, years or – and the amount over those years, yes. Is there a rule against it? Because you mentioned de-escalating contract where you start off high and then you go low. Is there rules against that? I don't think there's rules against it. The no. I know from a from a union perspective, it doesn't help. It's a, it's a negative for the union perspective. Mm. It's a team positive contract uh. because you can you look at it from that player standpoint. Along with his, you know, usually, usually, except for you know LeBron James, the de-escalating talent. You know what I'm saying? But talent's going like this, salary's going like this. Um, but from a, you got to take that person's contract though and put it in in a bowl with all of the contracts. So if you have a contract going down, you have the, all the older guys' contracts going down. It's going to bring the overall balance for all the players down. Mm. And it's you not, never want it going down. You want it going up for whenever you renegotiate. From a collective not, bargaining standpoint. It's oh, not sorry. common with the highest paid guys. I see it sometimes with like the mid and you, like you, lower. You'll, you'll see it flat before you see it going down. Yeah. Like Miles Turner has one like that. Um, CJ McCollum has one like that. Buddy Heald has one like that. What, Harrison they have one de-escalating? Yeah, Harrison Barnes also had it. I think his went from like 22, 20 to 18, I believe. Yeah. Um, so there are some guys yeah, that's, that that's what I said. It's, it's not a it's not a, a you know, I I know because I, I remember when I was in the union, I was like VP. I asked that question, like, why if if it's an issue for older guys, like why don't they just de-escalate the contract? And they was like, No, 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 we can't never do that. Yeah, Jaron ja Jaron Jackson, Jalen Brunson's actually okay. interesting. Well, some well, a Jalen Brunson, that one I understand because that was a front low to discourage yeah. the Mavericks from matching it. Yes. Uh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I, 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 I would love you like like you said, I'd love to be um uh, listening to that. Uh, what um you've been in a lot of these on, on you know on, on team and as a player um you i think we talked about this before you said um you you would think that he'd want between years or money he'd rather have years is that right you lean a little bit toward years I, obviously I, not I would, obviously I, would say, be closed. I, I would say years um but I, I think it can be balanced out. I think if you if you were to get if they were to give him a max contract for two years, I think he would take that over three years, the same amount of money. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because they they yeah. could give him what as you say forty nine basically a hundred million for two years. They yeah. could give him a hundred million for three years. Most guys will take that hundred million for two years and then be like. At the end of the day, I made the same amount of money without one year of, of grind. So yeah, the, the, the money still number one. From it is a risk, though. From it is a risk, right? The money's number one. The years is behind it. From a team perspective, the money's there, but I think the years matter more too. Because they gotta, they gotta, they gotta come to those years. You 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 got to get to the point where you have some flexibility. And I think from what I've read that the Sixers are looking for flexibility 
yeah. in 2024. Yeah. I mean, for an older guy, though, it is it is a risk, right? Because we've seen some guys, like, the money dry up for them. Not to say, like, Paul's not going to get signed by somebody if he gets bought out, but it's certainly not going to be anything close yeah, to what he's got. Yeah, I what I'm saying is, is if the years matter, if the years are producing more money. I'm just saying, if they're giving you $100 million, whether you do two or three years, you're going to oh, do Oh, same years. exact thing. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. What? But if they're giving you a hundred, you know, seventy-five for two, and then they're giving you a hundred from for three, then you're gonna take the three. But I'm just saying, if the, yeah. that's what I'm saying, if the money's the same, they're gonna take the fewer years. That's where the, the balance more, is. More, right. they'll take the yeah. more years. So at that's the end of the day, it comes down to the more money. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I guess it'd be a balance to it. But like, yeah, I mean, offer. technically, if so, if James did a two year 100 million or three or 100 million if he did the two year he would make more money because he could play again in that third year and anything that he made would be more than he would have made those three years before the question is would he do two for two for 100 or three for like 115 at that point you know what i mean that's when you get a little tricky yes and, you know that's now you're looking at well with the extra 15 million will you be able to get that in your third year if you're a free agent yes yeah. that's what i'm saying that's where it gets a little dicey and you got to make a decision yeah, because you got to think about today, James Harden, yes. as James Harden, and then you got to think about thirty-six-year-old James Harden trying to get yes. the most money in free agency that year. It's like I got to really factor in for a younger player. It's not as big of a deal because you're like, I'm twenty-four, turning twenty-seven. I'm gonna ball out for the next like yeah. seven, eight years. But if you're thirty-three on thirty-six, it's like I saw what happened to Chris Paul just now. Russell Westbrook's. I don't know what his contract's gonna look like. I, I man, it's tough. Tough. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We don't know, like, like because the one thing that those you for, we forget when those guys um get bought out or traded and stuff like that, like they in a lot of instances they lose their bird rights. Like Russ, when he were was released so he can go somewhere else, he lost his bird rights. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. that's why that's why I believe um, Chris is trying to get it to where he's moved to the Wizards and then he's moved to another team. So yeah, his bird rights instead of going to the Wizards, getting released, and then have to sign as a free agent with no bird rights, mm -hmm. which they're trying to do. Apparently, they're trying to get yes. him somewhere else. That, it, I'm 100 percent sure that's why. Yeah, um, yeah, and that's only to help Chris. That's that would be no other reason to do it. It doesn't help. It may help the Wizards if, maybe if they want to go a different route or bring some more players in, but they they can accomplish whatever they need to accomplish with their plan without doing that. Yeah, yeah. Because at this point, they would just not not guarantee his contract and pay. I think fifteen million this season, and that I would mean, be you're, it. You're making that move. The move was made not necessarily to get from under Chris. It was to get from under Bill. Yeah, Bill's yeah. I mean, that's you've accomplished what you set out to accomplish. Yeah. If you wanted more from that deal, you would have went and got a, a, a more comparable player as for and with a contract. But that's mm -hmm. wasn't the alternative. I mean, that's not what they were obviously trying to do. Yep. What, what do you make of, I guess, so there's a rumor. We we always talk about the Fred Van Vliet rumor a couple weeks back, but another rumor came out this week saying that the Sixers would not be interested in Fred Van Vliet, even if James Harden doesn't come back to Philadelphia. What do you, what, what, do, you, what do you make of that? Um, uh, one, I don't know if that would be necessarily true. I think that someone who, who knows where that came from. Sure. I, mean, I think yeah. that could be a negotiating ploy one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't necessarily think that that's true. If it is true, I would think that maybe the combination of him and Maxi is something they're high on. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. yeah. Um, just a combination of the, those two aren't, they aren't high on it. Um, but other than that, like, I don't, I don't, I don't really know either way. I, I think as we go and we kind of see how this James thing shake out, um, we all know we've said it just can't leave for nothing. You're gonna have to fill that void. So, um, and I like, you know, no, I do, but I still, you still think we all know they still need someone else. Um, so it's going to have to be addressed. Would you even, would you even be shocked if Melton was thrown in on a trade? No, no, 
Neither would I. As much as I think they like him and they like the acquisition and he was good for us, I I, no. I wouldn't shock I, I, me at all. I, I wouldn't surprise me. It would surprise me if Maxie's traded, Joel mm-hmm. was traded. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Van Fleet thing, I, I took two things away as well. One, the report that followed after that, that he's commanding north of $30 million per season, might have something to do with them being like, actually, we'll figure out a plan C. Um, two, um, we've heard that from multiple sources that uh, Maury's got a lot of tricks up his sleeve if they don't get hard. He's got plan B, C, D, E. I just think there's so much he can play with. I think going right to Van Fleet and, and giving him that contract is not just – like we, we, we could do other things. We're not tied to Van Fleet. Yeah, I just – I mean, I think if, if James – like I said, if James is gone, we'll get something back. It, it'll yeah. be a sign to trade some kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think at the same point where that Van Fleet uh, report came out, uh, it also said that we were not interested in Beal, even if Harden um, didn't come back to Philadelphia. So, like, seems like we're not interested in anyone, even if Harden doesn't come back. I mean, I, I don't know. There's not playing I mean, there. You know, Beal sure had a real trade clause, so he had to be um, interested in us too. So, yeah, that's that's true. But hey, our name did not surface when they were getting down to the nitty gritty. That's yep. what I said. It may, it may have been two way street, not just one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a, it was Phoenix. Um, Milwaukee, Miami. Milwaukee, Milwaukee and Miami. Miami. Yeah, I knew Miami. I, yeah, I forgot about Milwaukee. Yep, there you go. Yep. Um, okay, so moving on to our next topic. This is an interesting one. Uh, so reports have been coming out um, this past few past, past week uh, that the Sixers are expected to show interest in Christian Wood. Uh, Christian Wood, uh, history with him, uh, drafted in 2015 uh, at a UNLV. Uh, or no, went undrafted in 2015. Um, he's projected to be like a first-round pick. Went undrafted. Sixers picked him up. Um, I think he was second team uh, all uh, G League when he was with uh, the Sixers, uh, Delaware 87ers at the time. Um, since then, he's kind of bounced around the league a little bit. Um, latest team being in Dallas. Um, and, yeah, reports are that the Sixers are expected to show interest in Christian Wood. I don't really know what that means, but they're expected to show interest in Christian Wood. Um, so uh, I want to ask you guys, how would you guys like that fit? Uh, with Christian Wood rejoining the 76ers squad that brought him into this league. I mean, he fits. I mean, you have a guy with size and length that can space out and shoot a three. That's that's what you look for with guys beside um, Joel. So, yeah, he fits the mold. Um, I think it will come down to, you know, how, how he how he fits in as far as salary. Um, yeah. I, didn't, I don't necessarily see him as the – Plug and play guy in, in place of Tobias. I don't really feel like he's that guy. I think he's probably more agile, um, three slash you know four slash three guy. But I think he is a guy that that can play alongside Joel as well as some minutes behind him. So I think he's yeah. a good fit. Um, on the surface, it sounds great, especially if it's a good deal. Uh, he's played four and five. Yeah, his last three seasons, he's averaged 18, 9, and one block, uh, 38% from three. Um, last season, he had 62% true shooting percentage, which is 31st in the NBA, also really good. Uh, missed eight games in January, and when he came back for the rest of the season, 20 minutes a game from there on out. Um, he was out of the There were some issues, uh, you know, just from living in the Dallas area. It was some – issues on his minutes like it was some complaints yeah um, from fans and from his camp and i guess jason had his reasons why and the team had their reasons why but it, it was it was kind of going down that road that he would probably go, be looking somewhere else yeah just For like a little why. while there yeah just don't know why yeah yeah i mean defense can be challenging with him sometimes but he does have him be playing behind him if he plays four and he can provide some offensive fire, firepower backing up Joel um, at five and with maybe Paul Reed playing him at four. So if it's a good bargain, I, I'm, I'm in. I, I'll just keep it simple as far as interest goes. I think yeah. you can get him for a good price. If he signs even like a one-year prove-it deal to boost his stock for next year, wouldn't be that crazy. He's still young. He's like, what is he, like 26? No, I'm not sure. He may uh, I think he went to college for like 
all four years. Really? I thought he was still. Uh, he was born. He, uh, he's 27. 27. Yeah. Okay. Still young. Yeah. He's young. Um, yeah, that, that, that's another report I read on him was the fact that he's willing to sign a one year. The reports are saying that he's willing to sign a one year deal as a prove it deal to get a big contract next year. Um, so that would fit. Hey, if there's, an, if there's an opening that Tobias leaves, I, Christian Wood, that hey, Philly's a good place to come to. You got, you got, if Harden resigns, you got him at point. I mean, yes, it's less shots. We know that. But if he thinks he can maximize with a 62% true shooting, maximize those touches and get back up minutes without Embiid on the floor. Not bad. Eric, would, would that be something that um, a player thinks about? Like a guy like Christian Wood, who let's say he does sign a one-year deal. Is he not thinking about like, look, I'm going to go here. I saw a Tobias. There was games where Tobias, you know, saw the ball. And they had like five or six, six or seven shot attempts. Is that something that could be concerning to a guy like that who wants to? Yes, sign? definitely. I mean, you, you if you're going for a one-year deal, most guys want to go to – a team where you're able to get consistent minutes and be able to put up consistent points. It's the consistency um, that people are going to look at, um, you know, and you also want to win, but that's where the Sixers can help because we know they'll win some games, but, you know, being able to help a team get better. Like if you come there and your minutes are, are yo-yo and your numbers are going down, then it's very crucial that your team's a winning team and they took a jump. And you, you know, so then it comes down to the timely play, timely shots, timely buckets that you, in time, you know, things that you're able to contribute on. But the team got to be playing well to get you in that in that moment. So you look mm -hmm. at, let's say, let's look at Denver and their run, uh, or, or Miami, and how those guys on those teams, if they made did that, if they played that same way, and it was just regular season, it's just regular season. But when they made those plays in that in that moment, Big now moment. the eyes are on them. It's different. Mm -hmm. So if you're not in that situation and your your play is limited, it could be tough. So this is a decision that people have to make. You go over here and try to know in your minutes or shots are going to be limited, or you go play somewhere that's probably a middle of the road team and you're a consistent thirty minutes a game. That's 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 to each his own. And Miami is the other team interested in him. Apparently, so there you well, go. We know he'll go there and play better. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. They all do. <laughs> that's a tough. That's a tough team to be going against in a one-year contract battle because he'll go there. He'll probably be like, "Dude, I'll." I've seen what people do in Miami. I'll ball out and I'll, I'll make a lot of money next year. Yeah, because yeah, he has a, the superstar Jimmy Butler setting him up, so he'll, he'll be all right. Right. That's right. <laughs> Making him better game by game. <laughs> Um, all right, so we kind of mentioned this guy, Tobias Harris. It's been it's been like Tobias Harris trade watch for the last three years in the show, um, and it seems like that uh, could be happening uh, soon, really. Uh, so NBA insider Matt Moore said that Tobias will be traded by the end of the summer, and quote, reading tea leaves, I put Kings at the top of the list as to where he lands, and not just because of pre-existing talks and the mcnair Mori connection, end quote. Uh, so my question to you guys, with a 125% trade rule ending on July 1st turning into 110%, what is the likelihood of Tobias being traded by July 1st? And would you guys like a trade with the Sacramento Kings? Some names are being thrown around. Um, Kevin Herter and Richwan Holmes, another former Sixer, and maybe Davion Mitchell. Um, some Sixer fans are dreaming of the idea of getting Keegan Murray and or uh, Harrison Barnes, uh, but Harris Morris would make a lot of sense with the Sixers. But uh, what are your guys' thoughts on this latest report with uh, Tobias potentially being gone sooner rather than later? Sooner would not surprise me. I think it'll be a lot of movement um, coming up with um, free agency coming up and the draft. I think the picks are starting to be very valued, valued more because of the, 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 changing in the contract with collective bargaining. So I think mm -hmm. picks are starting to be sort of the, the extra luggage that's going in all these moves. So when people want to make moves or do favors, they being able to throw in picks. So it wouldn't surprise me that, you know, if he gets moved and you, you grab some picks and you grab some different things. Um, yeah. I, mean, I would say later in the summer, I would probably say the percentage would be higher. 
um, than the draft because he's already under contract. And I think you may see sort of some teams kind of play out, their plans kind of play out and, and see where they strike out, where they get some misses, and then come back to a situation where Tobias gets moved. So I, I think you have a lot of teams that are trying to execute other things that, you know, may not work out. And then all of a sudden a plan for, you know, to move into bias may then develop. After a summer league and where people are all together and they start talking, I can see it happening then more so than draft. Now it wouldn't surprise me if it happened by the, happened by the end of the month of the draft. But I would if I had if I was a choosing guy, I would choose after summer league and later in summer. Do you think we would get the most for him the later it gets or the closer it gets to the trade deadline. Cause I mean, teams now, everyone thinks they have a shot next year for the most part, right? Let's, let's see. Yeah, we, I, mean, we, I, I, I think you could get more, but you also would have to start over with a lot of mid, guys at the trade deadline. Mid season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's the downfall of it. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, you hold on to it because some teams, you'll always have some teams that come all-star, they're like, man, this isn't working. We got to make a move. Yep. Um, or have a season. Which about, but, have a season but, you also, nice. but you also might not have that. You may have that with teams that have guys that you don't want. Or yeah, that's need. true. Or they may have – or their players may be the same position as your players. It's, it's hard to know that – whether you're going to have guys that you can make a move that are available that will be able to plug and play in the Tobias position. So I think you got to move on it when you feel like you have a deal that you're happy with. Now, if you're not happy with it, then you hold on to it. But if you are, yeah. if you have one, you move it, you move on. If, especially if you're, if you're from all this talk, I'm, I'm, a, I'm assuming that no matter what, they aren't bringing Tobias back. So you, you got to find a way to, Move forward, in my opinion. I know we've heard that for so long, though. I mean, you, you I know, changed. but it's it's different now because it's you're actually at the point where you know the talk has been so consistent that I was confused on when he had one year left. Yeah. Been, <laughs> I know. So long. I know. I know. And, and with the one year left, and you add that to the CBA agreement, his he's actually like a plus asset again. Like you go to Twitter, you look at all the comments. People dog. I'm like, oh, no one's going to get that contract. That contract's a plus now. You you, you you get to get out of it. I mean, look at look at what happened with Beal. They they had to like almost give him away because they don't want that future money. Thirty nine million coming off your books. That sounds pretty good to a team that's paying sixty million in luxury luxury tax. You know, I mean, I I, I think that's it's very. Like, how do you address that? Do you address that with two smaller contracts? Um. Or do you go after one bigger contract? So that's the – with the July 1st, 125 rule. Um, so but by July 1st, we can trade him and bring back – I think I read $49 million. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we 110, we could trade him to bring back 43. I mean, it might not seem like a huge deal, but depending on – like they said more, he's got like 10 moves up his sleeve. Depending on what he's thinking about, that could be a big difference, right? And that's six yeah, million. I mean, it could be it could be a big difference. Yeah. But the team has to be willing to do it. So that's what I'm saying. Depends on who it is. Now you just can't do it, just do it. it depends on who it I is. know. I agree. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Um so, I mean the situation is is do you are you going to get a trade that offer that will not be available after July one? That you know what I'm saying? Like they say, okay, you have this deal right here. We would offer you this deal after July, but we can't. That's yeah. where you may see the deal done because that particular deal maybe can't be offered. It's not that the team pulled it. It's just we can't make it happen because mm -hmm. of the new rules. So you may have to jump on it before that kick in. So that's why that's why yeah. there's been all of this talk about so many moves by the trade deadline. By the um by the draft, draft or July first draft, draft yeah. and free agency. That's why everybody you know you see all these moves and that's why you see Denver make moves during the finals. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why you see all these, you know, uncharacteristic Crazy. moves because it's it is deadlines. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I totally agree. I don't want to, I don't want to just trade him just to trade him. I think that's stupid. And I think we would have done that by now if that's if we were just like dying for a move with him. Um I like the potential of a Kings deal. Uh I would love Barnes, but I read that we'd be hard capped if we traded for him because we'd have yeah, to. I, get I don't him. think I just don't think the Kings are gonna move Barnes. I just don't think that what they did last year that they're gonna move Harrison. I just don't think they'll move him after one year. Yeah. And after Murray, be, after Murray, is, Murray is sort of a younger, almost like Harrison Barnes, but but it's some time for him. You yeah, know what I'm saying like you know you having Harrison there, I think allowed them to kind of like okay, Murray, you 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 still a rookie, we can pull you back a little bit because you had a guy like Harrison there. Yeah, uh-huh. you do that. You had to put so much on him. Yeah, I mean, I like Herder, uh, Davion. Holmes, it's, it goes with a lot of the other deals I'm reading with him. It's like people are just trying to find ways to find teams and make money work. And and then when you look at it after you do that, you're like, you know, like, is this – why are we doing this again? Like, I, I forgot. I even forgot at this point. We're, we're, people were just so obsessed with trading him at this point. They, they forget why they're thinking about doing a deal, right? Like yeah. Atlanta, two of Collins, Hunter, or, or Bogdan. Um, Indiana, T.J. McConnell, Jabari Smith, and Heal, which a lot of people do like. Um, someone brought up Levine again. Clippers for like Gordon, Powell, and Rocco. I saw someone bring up Porzingis recently. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like we just like it's well, we can talk about it all along, but we're at such a disadvantage because we don't know the offers. Like we yeah. know what may fit, but you know we don't know to really criticize. Maury and, and his his folks on the decision because we really don't know. Yeah. But another one was the other Bogdanovich, the Detroit one. That was another interesting one because he's making yeah. like twenty. Yeah, so it'd be like, it'd be like, like Detroit won't send him to Philly. They Philly will take him, but they not send him. To Philly. Yeah. Because I, 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 I think it's a lot. It's a lot of teams that give up a lot more to get him. Um, from if you're looking from a Detroit standpoint. Them moving for Tobias won't help them the way going to get some players and picks will, mm-hmm. because of where they are. I mean, they signed Monty to that long deal. That's a team that trying to build it up to me by mm-hmm. from me making that commitment. This is the team that's trying to build it up, not you know, go in free agency. I, I don't think Detroit's going to get free agents like that. If Draymond leaves Golden State, I put Golden State back in that because they have a massive luxury tax. Even without Draymond, they still have to re-sign Clay, and they have kind of a log jam in certain positions. That's another team I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if if they jump into that. They can clear forty million off their cap with him, and may, maybe maybe they think, hey, do what Wiggins did with us. We we take on his huge number. He comes to us. He has a good time playing with us. And maybe he signs for a little less. Maybe he take. I mean, I mean, Wiggins signed his last deal was I think like you know in the high thirties, forties, and then he ended up signing like a like a twenty five per year deal with with Golden State because he liked it so much and they won. So you never know. I, I, that, I mean, that's another interesting one. Yeah, we'll see. Um, is that is that you trying to manufacture a way to get uh, Andrew Wiggins because you've been talking about that for months? <laughs> I think Wiggins would be a great fit with us. I'm not gonna lie. I, I do yeah. think that, but. You know, Gary Payton, Wiggins. A lot, a lot of people want to, to buy low on pool. I saw one with Zion. What would you think about a Zion one, Eric? Zion where? In Philadelphia. Yeah, I'll take Zion any day. <laughs> really? That's a, yes. Any day. That, that's a Maury move, too. He likes buying low on guys that kind of teams are kind of, you know, up and down yeah. on. Yeah. Um. Do you think Borzingas would be a good fit? Yeah, so not, I mean, it mean, gives you those it gives you those numbers, but I don't know how much it really impacts winning. Yeah, so I don't know. Like you know, I, I don't know. It's a lot of size, though. I mean, I would like to try it. <laughs> it's kind of like a really, it's a much more consistent, better defensive Christian Wood in a way. Really tall can play yeah, some I mean, back. Yeah, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't mind trying it. I just don't. It's just that I think the difference with 
Porzingis and Christian Woods, they could probably give you the same thing, but the expectations for Porzingis is so much higher. Yeah. Way higher. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he, he could, he could, he's giving you, you look at his stats, you look at what he's averaged when he's been the Wizards, he's just like, mm. all right. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. it's, it's how much is impacted winning. But I think if he gets on the team and they take off, you're going to be like, oh. But his expectations when he first came in the league and playing in New York City, yeah. that, you know, sometimes, you know, we're all probably guilty of not giving him the benefit of the doubt of what he's done um, because, quote, unquote, he hasn't met those expectations. But maybe those expectations were too high to start. He's 27, too. He's yeah. young. He's still got a lot, a lot of legs. Yeah, I feel like he's, he's been in the league guy. forever. I know. He's kind of like Wood, right? I know a guy yeah. like Wood, too, play next to Embiid because he's got a good shot. He can shoot lights out. And he's a decent – he's actually a decent low post def- – low man defender. When, if Embiid's out, you can pop him over at five for a little bit, too. So – I don't know. I- I've seen a lot of people question – well, some Sixers fans uh, question how Zion would even fit in Philadelphia with, uh, with our team currently constructed. I don't if know. T- figure, figure it out later. Get him and figure it out. Yeah, that's also what, what Maury would say too. I don't think he'd care. I think he would just do it because get him and figure it out. Great buy low opportunity. You can your transition offense will be your on the run offense will be money. Imagine Maxi and Zion running fast breaks. Yeah, get him and figure it out, man. You, you got that. You got you got a pick and roll. You got another guy that you could do a pick and roll set with with Harden. You run pick and rolls with Embiid. You run pick and rolls with with, with Zion. Hey, you run pick and rolls with Zion and Embiid. <laughs> like, I mean, that was the thing about it. Is like, you know, you, Zion had got to the point where people start putting their fives on them. You can't do that with Joel. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think people are, are – are, anyone sour? Well, it's because of the durability. So you have two guys who – Yes, and that's un- very understandable. Might not be healthy come playoff time. Very, very understandable. The other one would be not a well, to find. I would have to find out if he's available. Speaking of young, what's he like? Twenty three still. He, that guy hasn't like. Yeah. I feel like he's been in the league for like four years and hasn't like eight gone up in age yet. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, he's kind of he kind of has the whole MB thing where he hasn't really played a lot, so like he's got you know not really much wear and tear on the. Uh, a lot of tread. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. I and think that. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say it would just set us up for the future when and the the post MB days you got Maxi and Zion. That's the, also true. Yeah, you're hedging yeah. on that one. You're hedging now. You have now and mm-hmm. later. I'm and taking- the upside is just so high. Yeah. It's so high. And no, I don't think anyone would blame you in, in, in two years. Let's say you got injured again. I don't think anyone would blame you for that. You're, yeah. you're, you're, if you're going for championships, you're shooting for the moon, then do it then. You're certainly yeah. not doing that with Buddy Heal and TJ McConnell. So, yeah. like, people that want to do those kind of deals, it's like Davion Mitchell and Kevin Herter, fine players, but what are we doing? What, what, what are we doing here? Yeah. No, it would be fun. That'd be that'd be, that'd be splash of the other uh, summer, man. If that were to happen, yeah. Um, all right, so it's it's draft week, so we're going to close it out here with the report that uh, the Sixers are looking into getting into the second round of the draft. Um, and if you look at the guys we've been working out, um, it's all guys who are slated and projected to go mid to uh, late second round. Um, and obviously, we don't have we don't have a draft pick, so we'd have to find a way to get a second round pick. Um, so. The guys that we uh, have um, had uh, meetings with, um, I have them. I have them listed here, and I just want you guys to pick out your top guy that you would be happy if the Sixers were to draft. Um, yeah, based on potential fits with us. I don't know if all of them are meetings, but I know they're all guys that a lot of Philly people have talked about. Well, it's, 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 it's potential fits, and uh, it's mostly guys we've met with. But it's also potential fits uh, with yes. our team. Correct. Uh, currently constructed. So uh, these are the guys who've met and who, who many are saying are potentially good fits with the Sixers. Um, so Jordan Walsh, Keontae Johnson, Kobe Brown, Seth Lundy, Julian Strother, Brandon Pudziminski, Isaiah Wong, Jalen Wilson, and Amani Bates. Um, who who would be your favorite of the guys either on this list or you guys, someone that you think the Sixers could get mid to end of second round? I mean, Amani is the name that pops off that list because of you know the hype of potential he had coming out of high school. That's another high ceiling guy, right? Um, but uh, you know, 
would that help him coming to Philly? I don't know. Um, but if you're looking for someone that can score the ball, he would be number one on that list. Um, I'm not sure of his medical situation, but Keontae Johnson was an intriguing, is probably an intriguing name because of his size and versatility, his ability to, his versatility to do different things. I mean, if you look at what he was doing at Florida before his situation, um, so if he can do something like that, he would be a guy that, you know, that I would have picked out of this list outside of money. So um, I don't know a lot about these guys. So I just did a quick rundown of each one. Got found player comps from different websites. Um, so Jordan Walsh, 6'7", 3'4", uh, incredible 7'2", wingspan, which I found really impressive. Uh, his player comps are Demar Carroll and Ronaldo Balkman. Um, Keontae Johnson, 6'5", wing, really strong. Uh, they comped him at a, uh, which I find interesting, uh, two former Sixers, Raja Bell. They said a stronger Raja Bell and Justin Anderson is what they they chose for him. Hmm. Um, Kobe Brown, 6'8", a 2'3", could flat out score to no player comps that I found. Uh, Seth Lundy, 6'6", six, six, strong wing, can stroke it from three. Uh, solid 3 and D role player on a, a roster for a long time is what they said. Uh, Dylan Brooks was his player comp, which I like too. Um, Strother, 6'7", 3 and D wing, who can stroke it. Doug Christie was his player comp. I love some of these player comps, man. Um, uh, Pudzim, Pudzimiski, I can't even pronounce that. Yeah. Uh, 6'5", point shooting guard, combo guard. I couldn't find a player comp. Isaiah Wong, undersized combo guard. Didn't see his either. Uh, Jalen Wilson, 6'8", versatile, 3, score who can shoot. Um, Kendrick Williams and Keldon Johnson were his player comps, which I also like. All these guys are very, very – you can tell we have a type, right? Um, and then Bates, as you said, 6'9", shooting guard, very aggressive scorer, um, had some off-the-court stuff. His uh, player comps were Lawrence Moten and Brandon Boston. Some of these guys' names I've heard in a while. I was, Lawrence Moten, I love that. Um, I – Bates – Way taller than Lawrence, though. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um. I, I liked a lot of what I read about these guys. I haven't like looked at any kind of highlights or film, to be honest with you. Um, they're all they all have very very similar skill sets. A lot of them are three and Ders, um, high volume scorers, um, or guys who just volume shoot from three. So we know we know what we want. You know what we need. Um, based on what I read, I, I think I go Seth Lundy actually. Um, strong six six, stroke it. Uh, three and D, or they said like a career three and D or role player, which I we need more of those guys. So you never get enough. This shooting is a premium. So yep, you never get enough of that. Yeah. Although although I gotta say, Bates has got that unicorn build, man. Six nine, six ten shooting guard. Like it just it seems really appealing. I think I don't think wherever we do trade into, unless it's early. If, if, if I'm if I'm like he would be my number one pick for where we're choosing because it's upside. Yeah, because of where we're choosing. If you're saying first round, and eh, maybe you want to be a little more cautious with some red flags or something like that. Yeah. But if it was yeah. a second round pick, yeah, you can you can go ahead and roll the dice on that. Yeah. And mind yeah, you, I, some of these guys were set like mid, late first into like Kobe Brown's interested in Missouri. He had a really good year. He could score that ball. So yeah. Yeah. Isaiah Wong's got a little gay visit to his game. That that'd be my player comp to Isaiah Wong. He can he can okay. stroke it, dude. Yeah. yeah, Miami. Yeah, yeah. But you know, my issue there is, you know, he come in, he could be, you know, like the the young kid from Tennessee, you know, really good chance to play. Yeah. Yeah. But with, with with Rico there and Nick Nurse like like to play the younger guys, I mean, maybe we maybe we'll start to see uh, I don't more. Know how the, we gonna uh, play all these younger guys? If we can all these older guys, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's t- it's and tough to, try to win. Like I don't mean. It. You ain't going to be playing all these younger guys, man. They're definitely going to have a lot of games where they – we're not going to see them for like five or six games, and then they're going to play like 40 minutes because we're going to have like three guys sitting now. That's what's going to happen. Okay. <laughs> so they're going to have to be ready to, 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 to seize those opportunities when they when they do play. Yeah. Um, we change coaches, right? Um, and we don't know what, what our roster is going to look, right? 
Yeah. Joel's going to be back. So the expectations of getting past the second round is still going to be there. Yep. yep. Y'all figure it out however you want to figure it out. Mm. Hey, Nurse says an attack that head on. So he's, re- he's ready for it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know how he, he's not going to attack it by playing a lot of young guys. I can guarantee you that. No, 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 no. He's got a little. He's got a little knock on that about playing his older guys a lot of minutes. So, yeah, we're it's see weird because lot. I'm just saying he's not going to play a lot of young guys a lot of minutes. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah when he first took over that Toronto job, he was playing these younger guys a lot, and then as time went on, he started to play those same young guys, but in year five and year four a lot. So, yeah, yeah. Which is like yeah. that was an old – it's like that was an old team. I mean, Ananobi, Van Fleet. At one point, I think Van Fleet was the oldest guy in their starting lineup. Like, it's a, it was a young team. I don't know why everyone's freaking out about them playing a lot of minutes. Siakam, Ananobi, Trent, they're all like 24 to 27. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's Raptors fans trying to rationalize why they got rid of him and why it was a good move. I mean, everyone, yeah. everyone does that. Yeah. 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 But. All right, guys. Well, we guys hope you enjoyed the NBA draft on Thursday night. We hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, and hopefully we our predictions for our, our late second round, uh, if we even have a pick in the second round. Hopefully that uh, someone – hopefully we're right about Bates. I, I would love to see a Bates, um, especially in summer league. It'd be, it'd, fun. it'd be fun. We'll see. For sure. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys have a good night, and we'll see you guys next week. All right. Take it easy. All right, guys. All right, take it easy. Congrats, Congrats man. Good luck. Thanks, buddy. All right. <laughs>